Hello, I'm trying something new here on our YouTube channel and today I'm going to walk you through my process of when I come up with a business idea and all the steps that I take that follow that to start executing on a business idea. Um, this is the stage that excites me the most when starting new businesses. Um, so as you may know, I'm the founder and CEO of LifeLabs. It's a stop motion video app, but I've actually created dozens of businesses outside of LifeLabs. And to be straight honest with you, to be straight up on it, you know what I'm trying to say. Um, I am really good at this stage and then I am not so good at once the business launches to carry on nurturing and marketing the business and do what it needs to do for, in order for it to succeed. Um, so I tend to have lots of ideas and when I do have an idea, I it's all I can think about. I literally cannot sleep and I have to do all of these things in about 24 hours once I have a business idea that I'm really excited about. So I'm going to, sorry, my dog wants to join. I'm going to walk you through what I do in the first 24 hours when I have a an idea for a business that is really like igniting my soul and something I feel that needs to be executed on. All right, so the idea so most of my ideas are born out of personal pain points so and i know i already mentioned this but when i'm really excited about an idea i literally cannot sleep so i have to stay up all night and write down kind of the vision for this company and what what is the product and how it's going to work how it's going to be marketed how i can make it so i am going to walk you through that process um, so I call it brain dumping and that's basically, yeah, just writing everything that comes to mind down on paper. Actually, it's usually in the Apple notes, notes pad. <laughs> so here is kind of the five stages that I go through. So I, I look at the solution. Is there any competition? What's the user journey, branding and identity? And then what is the business model? So I'm going to go through each of those uh, more in depth through this. So first and foremost, does it exist? Um, does this solution exist? I do this by Googling the shit out of different search terms. I search on YouTube, Instagram, Google, TikTok. Um, so for example, my latest business, it's called Fantography, and it is to help um, parents capture candid moments of their family because my husband, he never takes pictures of me with my twins. And that really bothered me because I don't want my twins to grow up and never have photos with their mom besides selfies. And I love selfies, but they don't capture what it's like every day. You know, they don't capture me feeding them. They don't capture me reading a book. A selfie, I'm just looking at the camera and smiling. That's not really a moment. It's staged. Um, so photography, it's... 30 days of prompts, I send a prompt to the person who needs the help remembering to capture candid moments. And it tells them, like, take a picture 30 minutes before bedtime. That's your prompt today. But anyway, so I'm using this as an example because when my husband wasn't taking the photos, I started like Googling like Instagram dad classes or photography classes for dads. And I'm, I used to be a photographer, videographer, um, and I've worked with a lot of people who aren't comfortable in front of camera. And it it was more than just he needed photo skills. It wasn't the photo skills he needed because I'm I'm pretty good at editing. So I can turn a picture around and make it look pretty good, even if it wasn't taken in great lighting or whatever. So it wasn't just the photography classes that he needed help with. He needed help remembering. And I could not find anything on the internet for that. Um, the other business that we launched last year is called Quote, and it's a Canva template marketplace in the App Store. So there's you can buy Canva templates off of Etsy, off of Creative Market. There's tons of places that sell Canva templates, but there wasn't any marketplaces in the App Store that did that. So I saw that as an opportunity. So I forgot to add on here, but in the App Store, I would look to see like, is there anyone selling Canva templates in the App Store? And the, the quote Canva template, it's like cohesive packs of kind of infographic 
based templates because when I would go into Canva, I would use one template and then, <clears throat> excuse me, and then let's say I use a graph in one and then I would go to the, I would need like a quote based graphic for the next one and the colors didn't match up and I didn't have like a personal branding identity. So it's basically like a brand kit and it has all of the kind of infographic styles that you would need for your brand. So there's quotes, there's stats, there's graphs, there's engagement style posts. Um, so that's what I mean by searching for competition, just seeing if anyone else is doing this first. And even if they are doing it, it doesn't mean you should not do this. It's how, what are you going to do that's different? And how are you going to stand out? Um, so that's the third point there. Next up is I build out the user journey. So usually I'm just, I'll literally draw this out on paper. If it's an app, I'll, so for quote, it's like, okay, when they open the app, what, what is, what are they looking at? Is it one kind of look template? Is it broken down into categories? What's the journey and how are they going to use my product? For Femtography, it's, they get a prompt emailed every day. So it's a little different. It's not an app. And what does the website look like? Um, less focused on the website, more focused on the actual product. Um, and then I go into brand identity and naming the biz. So I usually come up with a few different business names and I search on Instagram for what's available and I make sure they're SEO friendly. So SEO is search engine optimized. I'll create a placeholder account on Instagram and secure a domain handle. I'm usually doing this at like three o'clock in the morning. I move very, very, very fast. And a lot of people might think, you know, you should probably think about this and do a little more research. And I agree, you can do lots of research, but I also hate getting stuck in like a freeze of waiting for these perfect things before just moving forward. Um, so for me, my main criteria is like, do people know what it is when I say it? Because SEO, if people are searching for things naturally and organically on the web, they might stumble across your stuff and that's free marketing. So um, yeah, I'll secure a Instagram handle and a domain. Of course, if there's like other businesses that are similarly named, I don't. I don't want that business name, like, or if that handle is taken and, you know, if I want the handle, but it's going to be like, let's say, I don't know, some long obscure name. I, I don't want that. Um, tone and audience. So what is the tone of the business? I make a list of what, what a potential marketing strategy could look like. Who would be a good fit to partner with us to promote this idea? So yeah, it's more than just a marketing strategy. It's, it's figuring out the demographic of who is going to use this. So for quote, um, our Canva template marketplace in the app store, that's for, you know, people who are sharing on Instagram, lots of stats and stuff, but they don't want to hire a graphic designer. They're not necessarily like a full on brand. It's more of like their personal brand. And there's a large audience for that on Instagram. I don't have like formal statistics or research that I go into this. I, I simply just observe what's happening in the market for femtography. Um, I actually did go to my own personal Instagram and do a poll on this, but it's, do I see other moms who are never in photos? And then do I see other moms who, when their husband take the photos, they look like shit. <laughs> And the answer to that is yes. I've seen a ton of moms who, and you know, sometimes it's the dad. Sometimes it's the dad who's always in the picture and never, sorry, sometimes it is the dad that's taking the picture, not in the picture. So, you know, we're super inclusive and I don't say it's it's prompts for just dads. It's, it goes both ways. From my research, it's like 80% of the moms that are never in the picture. So that's why I use that as an example. But um, yeah, I, Again, I don't have a formal way of doing this. I just kind of observe what's happening. I'm on social media a lot. So I, I do notice trends and with quote, you know, over the past few years, what I see most getting shared on Instagram stories is people sharing 
quote, quote based graphics, infographics. Um, so I was leveraging that opportunity. By the way, quote, we did launch it last year and we're still kind of <laughs> revamping it to do a relaunch. So we've been kind of quiet about it, but it will be getting relaunched soon. So how will this earn money? Um, what is the business model? Is it gonna be subscription-based? Is it a one-time offer? How can this be scaled? Um, you know, for a lot of the apps, it's usually SaaS, which is software as a service subscription. Um, one-time offer, Famtography, that's, that's a one-time offer. So figuring out, you know, like for, for so, so for Life Labs, for example, we have an annual subscription and a monthly subscription. For annual subscription, people get seven days free to try out all the features before they lock in and they can cancel before the seven days if they still want it to be free. Um, so just figuring out that user journey of the business model and what the value is for them and sort of if there's any trial runs, stuff like that, and how can it be scaled? So thinking about, um, can we build an affiliate program around this, a referral program? How can we get ratings and reviews in the door? Um, what's going to drive our marketing? Is it social? Is it an email list that we send out, like an email newsletter? What's going to be driving our, our growth? Is it ads? Maybe it's ads. I've personally never scaled a business fully on ads. We do all organic methods for the most part. Um, so that's what I kind of strive in. Um, execution. So once I have everything else done, I figure out what platforms are required to build this out. Do we have any resources in house to do this? Do we need to hire contract workers? And what is the timeline to get stuff done? The business ideas I come up with generally are they can be executed on quite quickly. So for quote, it's built on a platform called Flutter and Flutter is a language um, for development that can be pushed to iOS and Android using one so source code. Whereas with Life Labs, it's built natively in each app. So we have to have only an iOS developer and only an Android developer because it's using a lot of the, um, the native functions to that, to that to that app. So like the camera function in I in the iPhone, it's very specific to iPhone versus the camera function in Android is very specific to Android. So it's very expensive to actually run Life Labs because we have a full team of developers. Um, whereas with Quote, it's mostly an app with just images linking to, to the Canva template links. So it's pretty simple. And because it can be pushed out on both flat platforms, it was affordable to execute on. Um, with Femtography, it's all my insights as a photographer, as a mom, um, as a professional photographer and videographer. So I'm using all those things to build out the prompts. So yeah, I kind of, I, again, I do this all in the middle of the night. I think one thing that people, one thing that I would like to say I'm good at versus what I see a lot of other people do is I just, I get shit done in these beginning phases. And I encourage you, if you have an idea, just flush it out. Like, what are you waiting for? You don't have to wait till you have the perfect logo. Like not, none of that matters. What matters is, are you providing value to your customers? And I love to get things out as soon as possible. You know, there's usually lots of errors and that's okay because there's always going to be errors. And the beauty is when you get it out sooner, you can learn quicker and, and, and tweak the product so that it's, it's getting better and better versus if, so look, for example, launching an MVP, minimal viable product after launching that versus a, a fully polished, perfect product you might need to take the company in a completely different direction than what you thought it was going to be. So Life Labs is a perfect example of this. I thought it was going to be this personal time-lapse app um, where people created like pregnancy time-lapses and these like cool travel things of them standing in the same like unique pose in different cities. 
but it turned into a stop motion app and that wasn't the initial int intention but we pushed out the mvp and i just noticed people were creating stop motions with it and we basically after one year pivoted so that we were a full stop motion app we changed our branding and that's when things like skyrocketed for us um and we learned not just to continue marketing it as a pregnancy time lapse or even the personal like kind of travel stop motions we um they weren't stop motions i'm trying to explain but yeah it's basically let's say you like stand like this in each city you can like line yourself up in this pose and then have the backdrops change anyway and this is the last question that i ask my that i'm gonna start asking myself because i have a lot of these ideas and i get distracted really easy because I get so excited and I just want to execute on all these ideas, but what's going to suffer if I go through with this idea? Um, and what is the opportunity cost? So those are kind of competing questions. What's going to be the opportunity cost if you don't do this? So like, basically, what are you leaving on the table if you don't do this idea? Potentially lots of money and opportunity, but on the flip side, if you are super busy like me, I have multiple businesses and I'm a twin mom, you know, what has to be put on the back corner in order for me to do this idea? And I can't say I have a solution for this one yet because I, again, these ideas, like they consume me and I, I literally cannot focus on anything else except this one idea. It's like hyper focus and yeah, that, um, uh, sorry, I, I'm blanking. I, I don't have an answer, but it's something I do want to ask myself going forward. Maybe what can I kind of offload to other team members that's currently on my plate so that it will allow me to do this? Because this, this whole process is what, again, it really, really lights me up. And even though some of these businesses might not really go anywhere once they're <laughs> launched, it keeps me engaged once I have this out of my system to go back to, you know, my more long-term projects like Life Labs, for example. And that is everything. Uh, please, oh, this is a template that I used off of Canva and just ignore that. I didn't delete that out. <laughs> but if you have any questions about, um, my process to creating stop motion or sorry to creating businesses please please comment below and i will get back to you um, i absolutely love brainstorming ideas with people so if you have any road blockers on what's stopping you to create your business um, please drop them below most of my ideas like i mentioned um, they don't require much upfront financial investment because it's usually leveraging my expertise and my skills, or I can use some of the profits from Life Labs to fund the next project. So for quote, for example, I don't develop code. So I did have to hire out, um, we had to bring on the team from Life Labs over to quote to do that. And it was a pretty short project, which is why I was able to justify it. Um, but Femtography, it's leveraging all my own time. So please let me know if you have any questions, if you like this sort of content on our stop motion YouTube channel and yeah, that's it. Thank you.